Jeremy back again with another video and uh, you know it's been a while it's been a minute since I've dropped something on the channel but uh, as you can see from that intro there today we are talking about not one not two but three uh, shoes that are gonna go head-to-head -head here and um, you know essentially we got uh, the Saucony Triumph 17 we've got the Nike Invincible Flyknit Zoom X run <laughs> super long convoluted name and we got the Hoka Bondi 7. Now, um, I do want to jump in straight up with a disclaimer, just let you know that I purchased all three of these shoes myself. Uh, you know, no brand sent them to me. No, and the brands are not affiliated with this video in any way, shape or form. They will not get to see and approve this content before it makes it to your eyes on YouTube. So uh, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into what exactly these three shoes are. Um, they essentially represent the ultimate in max cushioning, protection, durability, and um, you know, just general comfort from the three different brands, right? And this is their three different takes on exactly how they get that accomplished. All three of them have high stack heights with super thick slabs of foam underfoot. Um, in the case of the Invincible, it has Nike's kind of like super foam, that p based foam that you might be familiar with from the Alpha Fly or Vaporfly Next Percent. Um, all three of these have full rubber coverage on the outsole, and that's really key um, when you're spending, you know, 160 bucks on a pair of shoes, or sometimes more, depending on, um, you know, a colorway or something. You want these to last as long as possible. So these brands are really trying to go out of their way to make sure that these are shoes that can last for the long haul and will be, um, you know, something that you can wear frequently and put in the bulk of your miles. And lastly, you know, all three have mesh uppers with overlays, overlays to provide additional structure, durability, um, and just have, you know, kind of more of a long lasting, comfortable feel in strategic places uh, that, you know, they've, they've done their testing and figured that that's the best thing for runners. So they all serve the same purpose, right? Durable, highly cushioned workhorse. And I used each one of these shoes for at least 100 miles. And now I have some thoughts and I'd like to share them with you. So how do these shoes compare? Let's start off with the Saucony Triumph 17. I'm gonna go in order of when I purchased these shoes. Um, I bought them all in relative proximity to an, one another, I think over like a three month span. Um, but I got the, the Triumph 17 first, or I'm sorry, 19. <laughs> well, I keep calling it the um, 17, it's the 19, I promise. Uh, so anywho, the Triumph of these three shoes, I would say, probably felt the worst out of the box. Oh, and, and let me just say, I have 250 miles on the Triumph. So this is the pair that I have the most mileage on. Um, take that for what you will. So the Triumph immediately out of the box was extremely stiff. Uh, I didn't really like how it felt, just that step-in feel. You know, when you're buying a pair of shoes this expensive and that is touted as such a cushioned daily trainer, you really want to feel that squish as soon as you put your foot in it and it kind of inspire that confidence that when you go out on that run, you know you're going to have that impact protection. Didn't really get that from these. Um, it felt really stiff and it actually caused me some pain on like the arch of my feet uh, on the first run. I think I took them on like a five mile run or something, which is kind of like my standard just just far enough for me to get a see how the shoe feels, but not far enough where it's like, oh, I'm too far from home and I'm gonna be hurting the whole way back if it doesn't work out. Um, so, you know, that, that feeling was pretty unfortunate. It made me kind of think about returning them. However, and this is where, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, just frequenting Reddit or, you know, other shoe tubers, reviews and things of that nature. But a lot of people mention that this is one of those shoes that just gets better and better over time and genuinely just kind of softens up as you continue to run in it. So uh, I ran in them again and again and again. And now this shoe feels way better at 250 miles than it did on day one out of the box, which I think is kind of insane. Um, I would say of the three, the Triumph still has the stiffest ride, but it definitely feels better than it did out of the box. And it's more than enough cushioning for you to, um, you know, be able to uh, get those long miles in and just feel comfortable. So with that being said, um, the shoe is extremely cushioned. It feels good. The toe box is actually really accommodating. I would say probably the best toe box, best upper fit of all the shoes here in this video. And um, just based on the lack of wear on the outsole and the way that the midsole has not really compressed to the point where it feels like I'm bottoming out or something, uh, I truly think that these shoes could probably get you to like 600 miles. I mean, it's just a tank of a shoe. I don't see why I couldn't. And I think also something that really 
kind of stood out for me on these is that they would do really well at different paces. I found as I was wearing these shoes that kind of the sweet spot for them was like these medium long runs that I'm doing now as I'm kind of getting into the swing of marathon training. So I'm thinking runs that are like 10, somewhere between 10 and like 14 miles. And um, I might have, you know, some strides thrown in or something like that. And these shoes just, they can handle all those paces that I, I throw them at them, you know, somewhere um, a little bit slower than marathon pace, you know, feels really good in these. And um, yeah, don't have much more to say about the Triumph 19. I think the only issue I have with these shoes is, I think, you know, it's, it's 2022, Saucony, if you're listening, you shouldn't have runners feel like the shoe needs to break in over time. Because there's a lot of other shoes, as I'll get into in a second, that feel really great out of the box. And, you know, if, if I was in a store and I put the Triumph on one foot and another shoe on another one that doesn't take that break in time, you know which one's gonna get my money. So, uh, let's move on to the Hoka Bondi 7. Now, I got 100 miles on these shoes, and I have to say, um, Hoka and I, we, we, we have a love-hate relationship. Um, I find that their shoes always feel just incredible uh, out of the box. They feel really good. And then somewhere, you know, 100 miles, 150 miles, they kind of start losing their luster a little bit. And then usually by like 200 miles, I'm like completely done with them. And granted, you know, I'm reviewing shoes on the channel, so I'm kind of going through shoes anyway, but it, it makes it hard for me to say, oh, I'm gonna recommend this to somebody else, knowing that that's kind of like how I, you know, get along with the shoes. So uh, as typical, as is tradition with Hoka, <laughs> when I stepped into these shoes, they felt amazing. First run, really great, same thing, five miles, same route. Um, I found that the shoe uh, just felt extremely cushioned, um, almost like I was on like a trampoline or something. It just really felt nice, like that sinking in feeling you get on step in, you know, kind of at the hill area. And, um, you know, it was off to a good start, but I will say the shoe has a pretty na uh, narrow toe box, like most Hoka's, so if you have really wide feet, that is something to keep in um, consideration. You might want to try these on in a store or somewhere that has a good return policy. But I would say, outside of that, the lockdown and overall comfort of the up upper were pretty good. Um, with the caveat that I find, like most other Hoka's, if you don't wear a pair of like good running socks, you might get some blisters, you might get some, you know, uh, discomfort um, just because of how narrow the last of the shoe is. So be warned, um, I always wear my thickest socks <laughs> when I'm wearing Hoka's. Um, so now, you know, on the run, I feel, I feel like uh, these shoes, they just provide great impact resistance. I found the cushioning to be really great. Um, but my biggest issue with these shoes was that they gave me a hot spot on both feet after about seven miles, right at the forefoot. Um, something I had never really experienced too much with other shoes until this point. Uh, so it was a bit of a letdown. I kept running in them, hoping that this would go away, but I found no matter what I did, somewhere around seven or eight miles into a run, it, my forefoot would always kind of start to ache a little bit and it would get worse and worse and worse the further I ran past that point. So this is a pretty big issue, right? This is a long run shoe. It's a max cushion shoe. It's something that you should be able to wear all the time, but you can't run those max mile days on it. Hmm. So yeah, this is a shoe that I wanted to do, you know, 12 plus mile runs and it felt great, you know, until I got to like that mile seven ish range and my feet would just be kind of screaming in agony, um, hope, telling me, hey, please, man, go home, stop, you know, call it quits. And I tried so many things. I tried to change how I laced these shoes. I tried to wear different socks. I played with my stride, which you should never do. I don't recommend that if a shoe is causing you discomfort and it's causing you to run in a way that is not normal to how you normally run, that's probably not the shoe for you. Um, but there are, you know, to a certain extent, there are shoes that kind of encourage you to run a certain way. And I was trying to figure out if I could just jive with the Hoka, if I could figure out what the Bondi was trying to tell me, but it just never happened. Um, I just personally found that I couldn't quite get the shoe to jive with me. So, um, you know, if you have your heart set on these, you really want a pair of Hoka Bondi's, you've heard good things, maybe your friends have them and they're all like, oh man, you're lame, you don't have max cushioned Hoka's, I don't know. <laughs> but if you really have your heart set on that, you should go to a running store, your local running store, try these on, really give them a chance to, to see how they feel or order them from a place like Running Warehouse or somewhere that has a really good return policy so you can really know after, you know, one or two runs, if these get on with you and you need to return them or not. Um, so yeah, with that being said, on shorter runs, 
cushioning was great. I found the shoes to uh, pick up well with when I when I picked up the pace. Um, so it's just a bummer that I couldn't use these for the the intent that I bought them for. Now that gets us to the big boys here, the Nike Invincible. So this is a um, oh, and I'm sorry. Before I get into it, 115 miles is what I have on the Invincibles. Um, this is a highly talked about shoe well regarded by a lot of runners um you know nike had a bunch of hype i think this was the first shoe that came out with full length zoom x with no carrier foam or a plate or anything and you know this is the same foam that's in their super shoes like the alpha fly the vapor fly next percent etc so this was a big deal right everybody loves those shoes they were waiting for this foam to make it into something a little more mainstream that you could wear all the time for your recovery runs and longer efforts so um, I was really excited when I found these at an outlet store for like 70 bucks and just had to try them for myself. So my first issue with these shoes was the upper. I found it so strange that this shoe has so many like overlays and it has padding like on the heel, um, uh, just behind like your, your Achilles, but it's padding on the outside of the shoe. So it's something that your foot will never ever touch no part of your body will touch this unless it, maybe when you're holding the shoe in your hand right but that's it's a running shoe it's not a hand shoe so that doesn't really matter right so i found that really strange right like they put all this extra thought into this upper but then when i started to tie the laces i found that the laces were too short so i had to remove them from the top eyelet and put them down one which caused me a new issue where now the shoe is too loose. So I kind of was in this like, you know, kind of purgatory where I was like, okay, do I lace these how I want to lace them? And then have the laces come undone in the middle of the run, which is such a bummer. If you know what I'm talking about, you don't like to run and keep stopping and have to worry about this. Or do I leave them too loose but now I'm getting hot spots, my feet are rubbing in weird ways and I just feel clunky like I'm wearing boots or something. You know, it, it just wasn't a good feeling to have to kind of figure out how to, you know, navigate that issue. So typically I was doing slower runs with these, so I just decided to leave them a little bit looser. Um, it wasn't the worst thing, I suppose, but it wasn't ideal. Definitely not as good of a lockdown as the other shoes in this in this format. Um, I found that the ZoomX foam does exactly what's advertised. Great protection. Um, it feels extremely bouncy and energetic as you pick up the pace. Um, and it, it's, it's just fun. Like, these shoes kind of remind me of like a heavier version of like my street flies, for instance, like just the way that the foam feels under your feet, which is amazing. But, um, you know, I would say of these three, these shoes probably have the best overall performance. They definitely feel the most energetic. They feel the most um, most energy return, I would say, as you the more you put into them, the, the more you get out, if that makes sense. Um, and they just feel snappy. So they shine really well on like longer runs where you might have like mixed paces thrown in or like a progressive long run where you're kind of building to this like crescendo of pace at the end. Um, and on top of that, I found that the durability seemed pretty good. I was a little worried about them, but after 115 miles, I saw no real issues. They're dirty as everything now because I got an all white pair. But um, aside from just being dirty, as soon as you clean them up, you realize there's no real wear on the outsole or in the um, upper, which is great. Um, so the biggest issue really comes back down to the upper lockdown, just not getting that fit that you really want. Um, so again, I would say try these on if you can. Uh, and I did try them on and I still bought them. So what does that say about me? But um, go, go somewhere where you have a good return policy just in case. Um, so last but not least, let's just get into the overall here on these shoes. I would say the overall winner, if you couldn't tell by how many miles I have on it, is the Triumph. The Triumph 19, I would say, is best all around. I think it's the most durable. And it doesn't have one glaring issue like the other two shoes have, where I'm like, hmm, I have to work around that. It was the only one that I would say was extremely livable, and I felt like I could uh, use it as I intended. So that's number one. I would say the Invincible will get number two. Um, super energetic, feels super fun to run in in comparison to the Triumph, for instance. But the issue comes back down to poor fit. It's a running shoe. If it doesn't fit right, you're not gonna run in it. Simple as that. And last but not least, ugh, God, I can't talk. <laughs> last but not least, the uh, Hoka Bondi 7. I would say this shoe had the nicest on the run feel. Um, just like kind of that all around good feel. 
uh, nice squishiness to it. But the upper also was a bit poor fitting in the sense that it's just narrow. Um, I don't even have wide feet, but I was getting, you know, potential hot spots and stuff on it. Um, and then also just the, that forefoot um, hot spot issue really was something that you just kind of can't get around. I personally could not put up with that, so I ended up donating those shoes. Um, so I think it kind of hinders the main use case and objective of the shoe, which is such a bummer. But with that being said, let me know if you guys have run in these shoes. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions. Um, if there's anything you want to see more of, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'd love to have a chat with you there. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this. So um, as always, you know, stay blessed, inspire others, and stay safe out there, y'all. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.